Now this video is going to try to share some good information about paint bonding so that when you pull up tape on trim jobs the paint doesn't come up or you put your bike out in the sun or your your whatever you're painting and you don't get bubbles between the layers of paint. Now to watch this video in 4k you have to go to the lower right hand setting click on settings it looks like a little wheel and go up to the top setting for 4k otherwise YouTube just picks some random thing that you'll watch it in whether it's on your phone or hopefully you're watching it on a device or on a a big screen TV anyway we are going to try to share some useful information that I think every painter in the world can benefit from on this video I'm going to try to share some of the things I've learned over 60 plus years of painting and basically the reason for making this video is I've had several people contact me in the last month with their having paint delaminating, coming up off at a primer, coming off at a color, or the clear delaminating. And I want to share the information that I think will help any painter, especially if you're new to painting, or if you want to paint your own motorcycle, model airplane, guitar, outboard engine. It's all the same thing, and it's very basic information. A lot of people don't understand it. I'm going to try to explain it on this video with some storyboards. So this is a typical problem that you can have when you're doing a multiple color paint job. Somewhere in the scheme of things, using blue painter's tape. Basic information for new, new beginners and new people that might not know. Not all tape is equal. Some of the tape, it's rated. This one is rated on the back. The scotch tape, blue painter's tape. There's green. There's other variations of and plain old masking tape. And fine line tape. So... The first thing to understand is not all tape is exactly the same stickiness wise. So if I'm going to lay out this paint job, and we've done that on hundreds of the videos that I've already posted, this is the best trick for a new person. Tear off a piece of tape, have a clean, clean t-shirt, not one that you just clean the coal bin in or the potato bin. Rub it on once, not twice, once. Peel it up carefully. Look to see if you've picked up any lint along the edge. And now you can go on here, lay out whatever design it is you think you want to have. This is, again, we're trying to share basic painting information. Press it down. The edge you can press down with your fingernail. You do your paintwork. That go, goes without saying. Now you're all done. Now you want to pull this tape up. Well, the first thing is there's going to be a tape. The paint is bonded. The, this In this case, this is a piece of fiberglass or plastic, and it's bonded to the primer, which is bonded to the color, which is bonded to the clear, which is bonded to each color that we have. And this is what happens to people that don't get the bonding part of it right, and that's what I'm going to be talking about, is you'll pull this tape up, and some people rip it up. Well, that's not good. You want to peel it up real slow and use a hairdryer, get it warm. And when you do that, you wind up not pulling up the paint especially on model airplanes. Many of my videos cover model airplane painting, motorcycle painting. But the, it's the basic 101. Is this is what we're trying to avoid, is having the tape pull up the paint. So let me just do this with a storyboard, make a basic explanation. So I, I want to start with the most basic thing. Here's the part you're trying to paint. And you think of this as a sandwich. You don't want this part to be super smooth. You want it to have a tooth. I want, at a microscopic level, I want it to look like that, like a tooth. That's what sandpaper does. So the minimum here probably would be 400 grit sandpaper to create that tooth. Now, once you have that tooth, this now this gets a lot easier. You, you put on a coat of primer. The primer goes down into these teeth, and it gets a nice grip. So now your primer doesn't come off. That's how you accomplish that. Now, a lot of people, if you look at this under a microscope, what you notice is primer dries with a little bit of an etch. It doesn't dry. High gloss, whether you use self-etching primer or <laughs> you put the primer sealer or auto body primer or primer filler, you go on. There's endless amounts of primer, but it dries with a microscopically small edge which allows the paint, the color paint, to get a good grip. So now you've got a grip between, this is now the, let's say the, the color paint to the primer. 
Now, this paint here, a lot of times, modern paint that's made to have clear coat, it dries with a very slight, uh, it dries dull. If you look at it, it's not shiny. It has that microscopic tooth. And now you put on three, four, five nice coats of clear. I'm not making this fancy. This is not meant to be a fancy video. It's meant to pass on information. So this is now a sandwich. Think of it as a sandwich. You've got the bond, the primer to the metal or fiberglass. You've got the bond from the primer to to the color paint to the primer and the clear and then between the coats of clear. Now how can you make that better? Well the best way to do it that I know of is don't paint anything shiny. Think of a piece of glass. If you paint a piece of glass you can usually get your fingernail under it and peel it up like saran wrap. But th think of this, the first thing you do is think of this as a sandwich. Now these are just some random photos from our channel to explain or to show this is a part we did for Joe, De, Joe Padula's Ducati 888. It needed to be roughed up. This No part of this was shiny when we put the first coat of prime on. The primer, it, the primer itself is primer sealer because we're dealing with that kind of a surface. A lot of the parts I had to back mask and I was very careful to do that trick with the tape not to pull up the tape. And by the way, this is all out on our channel. Ultimately, we got the correct red paint. Joe got it from Colorite, and the decals came from Australia, and we used the clear that Joe provided, and that job, among many that are out on the channel, there's a lot of useful information in that set of videos. It's all out on the channel for more information. So here's the whole thing in a nutshell. When paint peels up, it's either going to do one of two or three things. The clear is going to pull up off the color. The color is going to peel up off the primer. The primer is going to peel up off the metal. And you want to establish which layer of this did not have the correct bond. One of these layers did not have the correct bond, or in some cases, you can pull all the paint right up off the metal if you're painting shiny metal. So getting these bonds, we can, we can go on and on forever about how to get it. There's two ways that paint creates the bond. It creates it mechanically, like this. Two rough surfaces, the, the paint goes into the rough surface and gets a tooth, a mechanical tooth. Or it does it chemically. The, the, the thinner in the paint goes down into the paint below that's already dry and chemically melts it, makes it like a weld, and it joins it. There's a fine li a line where the paint is melted and bonded to the paint on top of it. A mechanical tooth, a chemical tooth, both at the same time. And it can be super disappointing when you're pulling up tape or you've got the part old back mass and you're ready to go to the next step and you're all excited you, and you pull up that tape and a paint comes up and that's the whole reason. And the storyboards are the easiest way I know to show that in real time that the information comes across. Okay, these are just the basics, the basic things that you should know. Good, good habits to get good bonding on the paint. Get a 400 tooth between coats. Wet spray. Use a slow drying or a mid-temp thinner. Mid-temp is always a good choice. And a four ounce gun. You don't want to get the paint on like you do with an airbrush where it's paper, paper thin, unless of course there's a, re a compelling reason for it. And degrease everything, including your fingerprints, and throw those dirty gloves away and get some new, the new rubber gloves. They're cheap enough. Some bad habits to get into is painting surfaces that are smooth, painting dry with less than 50-50 of the correct thinner, and quick drying thinner is for cleaning the gun. <laughs> airbrush. When you use an airbrush, there's places you can do the striping and different things with an airbrush, but if you don't do it correctly and you try to put that paint on dry and powdery mm, and the worst thing of all that creates all kind of headaches is keep your hands and fingers clean and wear rubber gloves fingerprints can kill even a good paint job now always keep in mind the more complex the paint job is and the more colors there are the more important it is to have good bonding because you can get right to the end of the paint job and have major major problems and when you pull that tape up and paint comes up, it's nothing but a giant disappointment. 
Now, since the whole purpose of this video is to share good information, I'm not looking to make a fancy gun with the wind video. This is good information for all painters. I haven't found any counterpoint to this. These are good habits. Drain the compressor. The compressor should never be sealed. When it's sealed, moisture builds up inside of it. It rusts, and that winds up going into your paint job. Before you use a compressor, drain it. And what I do is I let it build up to 20, 30 pounds of pressure. And... Open it up, let the air bleed out, close it again, let it build up the pressure that you're going to use. At the end of spraying, do exactly the same thing. Bleed out all the air and leave it open. Leave it open to the atmosphere. There'll be less chance you build up rust and contaminants. Clean the gun, the tip parts, and a jar of thinner. Always a great, a great way to keep it clean and not have a terrible mess. Now, my guns tend to be dirty on the outside, but they are clean on the inside, and that's what to me counts. Anytime you're going to use two-part, and probably for most people, wearing a mask when you're doing any paint is probably a good idea, but it's critical with anything, any, you mix A and B, that's a problem. Clean gloves. I have so many times been tempted to use gloves over and over and over and over, and sometime on a video it looks like I am, but I'm not. When I'm doing something where there's going to be a paint lamination, those gloves start off clean. They don't stay clean long. That's the problem. Another thing, when you're painting in cold weather, this is a, a common question. I let everything dry overnight. When it's in cold weather, I leave it in the garage overnight, whether it's clear, primer, or whatever. That's cheap insurance that you're not going to have a problem somewhere down the road. Now, I wanted to keep this video short with basic information. I hope I've done that, and I hope I've passed some good information on. We have many, many videos on our channel of how to buff paint, how to sand and prepare parts, how to do how to make carbon fiber from sheet and from from with resin and there's a lot of technology stuff this is basic stuff and i hope this will help you have a much more satisfying project little things to keep in mind again a big one in cold weather paint dries a lot slower than in warm weather and in warm weather paint can dry too fast that it doesn't bond and this is one of the reasons i like to work and do my paintwork, whether it's wheels or motorcycles, or when I built model planes every year, it was always in the winter. The dry time is longer, but the bonding is better. That's not a secret. Now, if you're new to our channel, this is one of the things we try to do is share painting information. We go on rides basically all season. This part of the, the, uh, the world, variable seasons. We try to ride with our friends that ride safe and, and don't do silly things. And because we have a Valentine radar detector, we try to minimize our exposure to things like speeding tickets and whatever and being caught <laughs> blindsided. But anyway, it's all about the passion for motorcycling. And part of the passion, my passion for motorcycling is the paintwork. All of the bikes in my collection, except maybe for one or two, maybe I'd never even counted them, are custom painted. I've enjoyed doing it and I've enjoyed making the videos and sharing the information and i know so many people have responded with positive comments eh, we have a few negative comments too but we try to learn from them but it's a channel that's basically for the people that have the passion for motorcycling and if that's you and if you like customizing your motorcycle or painting it or just sharing some rides with us up in the boondocks it's all on the channel you just have to search the channel Thanks so much, guys, for watching.